So in this problem, we're given a hollow shaft with a couple of forces that are applied to it, right? And we have some dimensions here, but what we're trying to find is a torsional shear stress due to the applied forces, right? We have a force here that's 16 kilonewtons, a force here that's 16 kilonewtons. Those are separated by 50 centimeters, and that's important. That's gonna help us to figure out this torsional shear stress. And before we get started, we kind of have to know what is torsional shear stress? Well, to do that, typically we're gonna look up some sort of formula, right? And this is in different, you can find this formula in different references. The one I'll show here is the FE reference handbook. So let me pull that up. And if we look at the FE reference handbook, we get this equation here where we have tau or the torsional shear stress equals TR over J. And this is where you need to know where or, or what these values mean. Well, T is gonna be the torque, R is the radius and J is the polar moment of inertia, but unfortunately they don't give you what J is here, right? So we have to go look that up as well. So let's go back and, and first we'll uh, write down our formula. So the formula that we just found was tau equals TR over J. And sometimes you'll see this as TC over J, where C is just the distance from the center of the shaft to the point where you want the torsional shear stress. Typically you want this to equal R because that's gonna give you your maximum torsional shear stress. Okay, so T is gonna be the torque, so let me write this down. R is gonna be the radius, that's where we're gonna find our maximum torsional shear stress. And J is the polar moment of inertia. And you might be wondering, okay, T, I kind of have an idea. Torque, that's like a force times the distance. Radius, I, I, got, I got that good. But what's J? Well, that's where we have to go look at another reference, right? And typically what we'll do is we'll look for a reference that gives us some idea of what J is for a circle. So if we go back to the FE reference handbook, let's pull that up one more time. What we find in the reference handbook, you have to scroll up quite a bit. Um, this is, you know, this is in there somewhere. It's in other textbooks as well. You can go and look up these formulas in most, you know, structures or statics types of, uh, of textbooks. But what we find here is J is going to equal pi times A4 minus B4, or I'm sorry, A to the four minus B to the four over two. And what's A and what's B? Well, A is the outside radius and B is the inside radius. So I just copied the, the diagram in here and I'm gonna write down the formula and then we'll substitute it in and solve. So the formula was J equals pi times A to the fourth minus B to the fourth all over two, okay? And what's A? Well, A is this, you know, the radius, the outside. So if we come from the middle here to the outside, that's gonna be, well, half of eight centimeters. That'll be four centimeters. I like to do that in millimeters. So I'm gonna convert here. Well, what do we have? We have um, four centimeters, which is 40 millimeters. That's to the fourth power. Uh, minus, you know, the inside radius is gonna be 30 millimeters to the fourth power, okay? All that gets divided by two. And when we do that out, we get some big number here, right? That number is going to be 2748894. And that's a lot of millimeters to the fourth, right? Um, some people like to do this in meters to the fourth. I, I prefer millimeters to the fourth. I, I don't know. I just, I like the, the numbers that aren't, X, that aren't uh, scientific notation. That's just the way I like to do it. But this is this is one thing, right? We have J now. We, we know what R is here because that's the radius. That's gonna be this, this A term. But now we still have to find T and all that we're given here is forces, right? So to find that, what I wanna do is I just wanna draw another free body diagram. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a free body diagram of this handle. So if I draw that in here, what we know we have acting on that handle is one force that's 16 kilonewtons up, um, one force that's 16 kilonewtons down, and if you think about it for a second, right, this is going to create a moment, right? If you if you take a you know look at this, this is going to create a moment that goes like that, right? Well, what we know that has to happen is we have to have some moment within or or torque within this shaft that's going to resist the moment due to this force couple. And, and Dr. H, this one's for you, but when two engineers get married, they they create a couple. And, and we know that every couple has its moment. Okay, so that's a joke. Um, so what do we have? Well, what we have is we're gonna put this in here and this torque, this torque T really, is gonna be you know right at the, the shaft and what's gonna happen is if this one's going this way, we're gonna have this torque T resisting it. So that's gonna be, you know, right at this point is T. Well, that's good, but what do we need to do? Well, we still need to go and we need to go and we need to sum 
our torques or some of our moments about some point. In, in what point are we going to pick? Well, if we call this point A, you know, this point B and this point C, what we know is we can sum torques about any point and it'll be in equilibrium. So what I'm going to pick is I'm just going to pick uh, if we sum torques about point A equals zero. Well, if we say anything that's going to be counterclockwise is positive. So what is that? Well, if we put our pencil here, what do we know? Well, we have this torque, right? And then we have, you know, minus 16 kilonewtons times, what's our distance? Our distance was 50 centimeters or 500 millimeters. That all has to equal zero. So when we solve this, we get the torque equals 16 times five. That's going to get us, this is, it ends up being 8,000 kilonewton millimeters. Okay, so that's our torque. So now the cool thing is all we really have to do is come back and substitute in to find our original shear stress. So let's do that. Let's say tau equals what? Well, T, which is 8,000. And actually what I'm going to write here is I'm going to multiply by another thousand to get 8 million Newton millimeters. Okay, then I'm going to multiply by the radius. The radius, right, that we that we care about here is going to be the you know from the center of this thing to the outside, from the center of this thing to the outside. That's going to be our our um, 40 millimeters, and then we'll divide by J, which was 274.8894 millimeters to the fourth. And then when we do that out, we do the math out, what we get is 116.4. And if we look at the new, um, the units here, we have newtons, and we're gonna end up with per millimeter squared. Newton per millimeter squared. And what I know in terms of conversions is one newton per millimeter squared equals one megapascals, which is great because when we do that, this also equals 116 and megapascals. And, and I took a little bit of liberty to round there, but when we're at it, we know this is our answer. We come up, we look at our you know choices. It's in our list of choices, which is always a good sign, but we were able to solve it, right? And how did we solve it? We first identified this equation, right? We identified that we need to solve for the torsional shear stress here, right? And then what did we do? Well, we found out what the, you know, what this polar moment of inertia was. We knew our radius, we found our torque. We substituted in and we solved. All right. Hey, I hope that helps you. You know, if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment. Otherwise, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.